Everyone, please join me in welcoming Jan Kamasa. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, guys. Um, well, thanks again so much for being here all the way from Warsaw. I hear you're going back tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> so thank you. Um, why don't we get started by telling us, um, can you tell us how this project came together? It said in the beginning that it was based on a true story, which is pretty remarkable. Um, can you tell us a bit about it? Well, actually, it's inspired by a true story. Um, the difference is we've added a few elements that changed uh, the original one. Um, Mateusz Patsevich was the scriptwriter of Corpus Christi. He was 18 years old when he became obsessed with cases of fake priests in Poland. I didn't know it at the time, but apparently it's a th thing. Uh, so, yeah, and um, we, uh, he, for like a few years, he researched um, a, a few cases, and one of them was the basis for, for like, like the base for the story. Um, and the original one, Patrick, his name was Patrick, um, he um, took over a little parish in a small community, a uh, very conservative region of Poland, and for four months during Corpus Christi Christian holiday in May, June. And so he helped uh, organi in organization of, of Corpus Christi. Um, in the original story, he when he was uncovered, people didn't know whether they were their children were baptized, their their uh, whether they were married or not, and so they started to write letters. Obviously, they felt betrayed, but they loved him like he he was the figure uh, in the community. So he, he, they started to write letters to Vatican, and Vatican was uh, went nuts and uh, <laughs> hearing that something like this uh, occurred in, in anywhere in the world. So they came to Poland, this special committee came to Poland and they ran an investigation, independent one, um, and, and decided to everybody's surprise uh, to, in can canon law, there's this ex expression, heal the sacraments. So they made them all legal, funerals, you know, uh, uh, baptizings, and, marriages and everything, actually, every mass. But he was excommunicated from church. So, uh, so Mateusz wrote about uh, the article about it. He was approached by a producer, Krzysztof Rak. He's, Krzysztof is very well no, uh, renowned in Poland. And Krzysztof, Krzysztof acquired rights, wanted to acquire rights for the story. And Mateusz said, I'm, why don't I write it myself with your help? And Krzysztof and Mateusz worked on the script and they then then they sent it to a few directors. I was luckily I was one of them. So Wow. Um, and can you tell us a bit about casting Daniel, um, your lead performer, um, Bartosz Bilena Bilena um, is incredible and really I mean is so quintessential to this storytelling. Can you talk a bit about casting that lead? Well, ba Bartosz is a, is a is pretty well known in Poland in terms of in terms of theater. Uh, a lot of um, theater goers they know him. Uh, he took the stage when he was twelve, so and he loved it. And uh, a lot of people uh, like people were expecting him to make it big in cinema, but actually because of his characteristic uh, features, he was hired to play cuckoos, villains, and psychos, usually mostly in, in, in films and series. And I, everybody knew he's so exceptional. So um, I knew of him. Uh, I didn't know him before. Um, he um, came to uh, the audition. And um, actually, the other character, Pincher, uh, his friend, was meant to be Daniel in the first place, because he's pretty well known in Poland, and in order to get funds from Polish Film Institute, you have to put down names of possible characters. So uh, Ola Konieczna, the Lydia, the Sexton the church lady, was already uh, a name, so I, I wanted to work with her, with her badly. And uh, Marta, uh, Eliza, uh, resemble also the girl. And Daniel was Pincher. I mean, 
Yes, and Tomek uh, was meant to play Pincher, uh, the Daniel. And then we had the auditioning process finally when we got the money and 300 male actors, like, like uh, actors, young actors came for the audition and they had two tasks. I gave them both improvised, usually. That's how I work at the beginning because I, I want to know who comes up with what and improvisation is is a as this battleground <laughs> not not very pleasant to, to many very pleasant to some so uh also i have to keep that in mind as well the talent doesn't have to be just for improv you can uh have multiple different um approaches to 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 creating a role um but uh, they had two tasks one was to um to perform to conduct uh, a sermon in their own words and sing something. And the other one was to express uh, anger to towards the camera, as if the camera was their friend who turned them in at the police station. Sort of like this streetway, streetwise character. And to, to, this, to my surprise, um, 300 people split in two. And first half was great in being a priest, and the other half as a hoodlum. And Bartosz was the only person, actually, who wasn't good at neither of these. Uh, <laughs> like, uh, why? Because he, he, and thanks to him, I understood it about the script. Because Daniel is neither a priest or, uh, nor uh, um, um, uh, uh, a criminal. He's somebody else. Uh, it's about roles, and that was spot on. Thanks to Bartosz, I understood it, and he, he he looked very different. He has he had long hair, uh, very thin uh, sweater, dog, you know, hipster-ish. <laughs> <laughs> so my producers went nuts when I told them. I told them this this is the guy. Nah, this this. Impossible. He looks like a girl. He looks. He looked like a girl. Uh, like, I mean, I, no problem with me. But you know, for my producers, I told them we're gonna pull it off. I know there is a hunger. I can feel it. My father is an actor. I can feel a real hunger in an actor to go to great lengths in order to um, to create the role. And I felt it in from in Bartosz. So we started the journey, and it ended here. You know, you touched on um, a, bit, a bit of this already, but um, one of the biggest thematic um, through lines that I see in the film is duality. Um, and it seems like uh, Bartosz himself can embody a, a, the masculine and feminine and a big theme of duality. There's a lot of um, oppositional ideas, I think, that we see throughout the film, and one of them being violence and vulnerability, and we see that in, in him, and of course we see that in the townspeople as well. Um, they're first presented to us as victims, but as we learn um, you know, more, more about the story, uh, they're also, in their way, sinners. Um, can you talk a bit about exploring those themes of duality through the film? Well, actually, that, that's something which excited me the most when I read the, when the, read the first draft. Because I, I realized we have two films in one. One film is about a guy who pretends to be somebody else, a priest. He imper impersonates a priest in a small community. The other, the other film, which would, both could go on their own, the other film is about fractured community. So I can easily imagine a, uh, a film about a young priest coming to town and discovering their sins or mysteries. And uh, funny enough, um, Mateusz, the scriptwriter, was able to uh, um, to end up with a situation in which both films, both layers, communicate with with each other. So thanks to it, we have a liar who squeezes out the truth from people. We have a patient from the juvenile detention center who runs a therapy in a village. We have people from the village um, who feel rejected. By them, they don't hesitate to reject other people. 
So I think it, it just you have this great play between what's right and what's wrong, and you, what's, what you, th you, th you think is right and wrong. And it plays with you. The, the film plays like in a, in a very beautiful way. It was already in the script, so I just I was working with actors to cherish it, to um, and and to flesh it out like through 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 their. It process. seems too that that trauma plays a big role in um, in those storylines. Um, how the t how the town can't move past this trauma that's happened to them and sort of keep hold themselves there and keep it present by rejecting the widow and um, you know that holding on to this anger and also Daniel has his own trauma as we find later when we learn about his crimes start of part of what makes what appears to um, uh, draw him to this community and be so moved by them is probably because in his own way he's dealing with similar ideas. Um, was that a consideration at all or the role of trauma in that? Yeah, of course. Um, he, uh, he needs a community in order to at least f feel like somebody. And the community needs some somebody who would give them hope and spread love. So they both need, like the, the both entities need, need each other, especially with the, the old priest being helpless and sort of, you have three figures who protect the status quo, Lydia and the mayor and the priest. So like three monkeys. Mm -hmm. uh, that was our sort of symbol too. <laughs> Um, for the film when we worked on it. Um, and Daniel, of course, grief, especially when, it, when you're one of the, you, when you're directly struck by it, um, might be a, a powerful tool to manipulate people. Uh, I could, we could see it in Poland in 2010, the plane crashed with uh, our president and first lady on, on board. 90 something people died and the president's bro twin brother Yaroslav um, who's now uh, who was uh, and now is as well the head of the big one the biggest uh, party in Poland he clanged on to the grief so much that he was actually untouchable so he could go on with his policies and he used it I feel um, I, I don't undermine his real grief, and, but it was such a powerful tool that he was able to sort of create this, uh, especially among um, people who are more conservative, create this circle of almost like believers, uh, even though he's not a spiritual figure. But to be honest, Lydia is the spiritual leader of the community mm -hmm. before uh, Daniel arrives and he becomes uh, by wanting to heal them he becomes the biggest biggest threat to the status quo right. um, sorry I I had my question and then I got very lost in what you were saying um, and uh, oh um, I had read somewhere that um, the town that you filmed in um, I think you referred to as the Bible Belt of Poland, and um, maybe piggybacking on what some of, some of what you were just saying. Um, can you tell us about what that experience was like and making a Christian film, um, or is it a Christian film of uh, making this film <laughs> in uh, such a place? Yeah, well, uh, <clears throat> uh, um, it wasn't easy to make this film. Um, there's many reason for, reasons for it. One is because we live in a polarized world in which whatever you say or do or even what, what, what you wear sort of labels you as part of one or the other bubble. So it's, Poland is not an exception from, from it. Um, we, of course, cities like Warsaw, which is the capital in Poland. I, I, I'm from Warsaw, from Poznan, but all from Warsaw. Uh, I was growing up there. So um, I'm from this leftist liberal bubble. Uh, going to countryside, uh, which I didn't know, and I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm a typical uh, urbanite. I 
I feel like I missed the half of the world by staying in the city, but you know, that's where my family is, that's where I work. Mm, so going to the countryside, I felt like I was visiting a totally different country in, in which people speak the same language, but we have different sy value system, systems. So I was trying ever, like, to be um, as pure and sincere with them and not patronizing, not trying, like, not looking down on them for whatever reason. But anyway, uh, we wanted to shoot in church, you, you saw in the village, and we weren't allowed because um, uh, we, beforehand, we, the local priest was very helpful, but he said, guys, I work for this corporation, <laughs> and you have to uh, submit the documents and uh, for to, to look and if you look for permission to shoot here, you have to go to Curia to the bishop, which is the local uh, office for the whole region of very conservative one that sounds southeastern part of Poland. We call it the Bible Belt, Polish Bible Belt. And obviously, the church went silent when they mm. got the when they got the documents, so they didn't want to talk to us. And that's what church usually. Did. Uh, does they don't want to talk if they want if they don't want to um, they don't want to decline something straightforward they just don't want to talk right. but we were you know we had the, our deadline we, we needed to start shooting and we need to we need to know which is the church and how to like we had six days in church and two days uh, in the surroundings we the, the surrounding uh, terrain of the church so so uh, Finally, uh, the bishop felt cornered by us, and he decided to write a document, the official one, in which he said that this film is going to be probably, most probably, and he knows it from the from the script, anti-Catholic, anti-Christian, and uh, and it belittles the role of the priest okay. by showing any anybody can be one, because church is not very happy with fake priests uh, in general, right. um, which. Also, also, we didn't know it, but um, beforehand, I met, I organized the the, the meeting with a local, like a social club, um, older ladies who I felt were, I I wanted to connect with them. I felt that they might be the ones who really uh, wield power in the in the village, and. Uh, and the local priest. They all came for the for the meeting. It was very nice. But it, I felt for two hours like I was interrogated by them. <laughs> they wanted to know who wrote the script, uh, why are we filming in their town, etc. Very very nice. But I felt a little distance there. So when it, when the meeting finished, I came, I went uh, to another for another meeting with another uh, the, the, the woman from the cultural, uh, cultural center. And she was from Krakow, bigger city, and she was just um, uh, having office there. And she said, oh, so you had a meeting with whom? I said, with, with this uh, woman, very, they were very noble, and, but man, it was two hours of interrogating, and they were very distant, and, what, and they asked me, uh, they 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 criticized me for uh, because I told them the script, and they said it's impossible somebody could pretend to being like pretend that he's a priest for two or three months, mm -hmm. and this lady said, oh my goodness, you know what? Because they know what? Do you know want do you want to know why they were uh, interrogating you? Because we had a priest here who was fake for two years. <laughs> They thought we were going to film at the story about their village. And so it's so uh, frequent. So many means. Also, Mateusz Patsevich, his name, uh, his name is the scriptwriter. His name was pretty telling in Poland. His father, Piotr Patsevich, was for 10 years, I believe, he was, he was the head of the uh, uh, very liberal uh, newspaper in Poland. So I, I know from other people, the bishop knew about it. And just he didn't want to have anything in common with uh, George Soros, and uh, you know because it's that's the part of the policy, right? So 
we just have to fake it. So uh, whenever you see a scene in a film in which the main character approaches the gate of the church or uh, they're inside a church, there is a procession of, we had 200 actors, 200, 250 extras. And during Corpus Christi, they were meant to walk out from the church. We weren't allowed to go there. So we were, from, there started the scene from behind of the church. And we had to open the gates of the church using computer. So it's pretty telling. Uh, inclusion, exclusion. Right. And yeah, so. Wow. Um, and I wanted to lead up to talking about camera movement because that final scene is so impactful. And my second time watching, I was, I was keeping an eye out for when you have the camera move. And it's almost not at all. Um, a little bit in the first scene, when he first sings in his first mass in the church, it pulls out. There's a little bit of a push in um, when they have the discussion with the mayor about power and truth. And unless I missed one, then we have that final scene. Um, can you talk a bit about those choices and um, the intentionality of, of using that, the camera movement so precisely? Well, actually, we decided to use camera movements every time uh, when, when Daniel becomes violent. So the first scene in which he's part of the, he's not violent directly, but he's part of the, 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 the bubble, violent bubble. The last scene in, in which he's, uh, so the coda is there, the first and the last handheld camera. But usually the whole film, we wanted to, um, to, to, to shoot with the c camera on uh, lock off mode. So the camera doesn't move at all, almost. Uh, I wanted to have this impression of Daniel, ev even though he leaves uh, prison, the prison, he's imprisoned within four walls of, so whatever he does, he can, the camera stays there and he just, so he has prison all the time in the film. Um, but there are some instances in which camera moves a little bit and I was always trying to make it only 10 centimeters. So it's, we knew exactly, I, I, I made, um, a few moments in the film in which I felt the camera should move a little bit here. So something is going on with his inner prison. And that's the, that's the, that's the sparkle he has. Um, the moment when, in which during the first mass he says, silence can be a prayer too. So just before that there's a silent and just a slow um, uh, Pushing and and then then you know when he sings also when when he feels something from out of sort of out of the the film <laughs> also sure. I felt yeah and um, just on that last scene again too um, the choice of where they're in in the dark fighting and then that really shocking transition when it goes outside and the camera is overexposed and we can almost hardly see anything. Um, can you talk a bit about that and if there was some sort of an idea behind darkness into light or enlightenment, if that was a part of it at all? Well, actually, um, because we wanted to, it's Piotr Sobocinski, the DUP, DUP. He is great, he comes from a very, well-known, well-known uh, family of cinematographers. His father and grandfather, they were working with uh, Kieślowski, uh, Andrzej Wajda, uh, great names. So Piotr is very, very talented. It's not his debut film. Uh, he's two years younger than me. He is, uh, it was his intuition uh, to, when he read the script, I asked him, so what, what do you think the palette should be like? And he said, it's obvious. Uh, this, guy is, uh, this guy is like dawn, like before entering light, because he doesn't know who he is, so he wasn't born at all. He didn't have any uh, chance to be born, because he, uh, his life finished sort of in a way when he was very, very young, committed a crime, end up in a prison. 
and like so th the whole film should be like uh, he should feel like a like he just he's just before uh, the day starts so, so the dawn colors of the dawn and the last scene should be like uh, and I didn't actually for first thing was mm, maybe it's an exaggeration and he said trust me like let's go overexposed because uh, the this is another film that starts there. Uh, he's being reborn there. So the lights should just, and the colors should reset. And this is the moment uh, after he is sort of, because what he does by the end of the film is he sets, I think he loses his, for a minute, he loses his humanity. I, or, or he tries to lose it in a way. He, he says like, you wanted me to become a murderer? Here, here I am. I was trying to do something different, to be a better per person, to spread love, whatever it is. But you didn't let me, so here I am. You wanted, I'm going to kill this guy. And he's been being saved by his, the Pincher character, who had the seed of good already planted before him, because he saw him performing. The, so in a way, the good Daniel did in, in, this, in the village saved him by, by, by the end of the film. So there is a, a little bit of hope. Of, of uh, by the end of the film, so I said, "Okay, this is this sounds fine." And let's, films are about taking risk as well. So it's not you can design everything, but it's good to destroy something sometimes because it's more lively. And yeah, I think. So. Wow. Well, thank you again so much for being here and bringing your great film. Thank you for staying.